I will not leave you desolate, says the Lord. I will come to you. Good evening, people of God. I'm the Reverend Dr. Chris McMullen, and this is our midweek service of evening prayer for the parish of the Upper Kennebecasis in beautiful Kings County, New Brunswick. And our liturgy this evening is from the Canadian Anglican Book of Alternative Services. May God bless us as we worship him together. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. Bright burning sun with golden beam, soft shining moon with silver gleam. Sing praises, sing praises, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O oh, rushing winds and breezes soft, O oh, clouds that ride the winds aloft, sing praises, Alleluia. O oh, rising morn in praise rejoice, O oh, lights of evening find a voice, sing praises, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Earth, ever fertile day by day, brings forth rich blessings on her way. Sing praises, Alleluia. The flowers and fruits that verdant grow, let them God's glory also show. Sing praises, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. And every one of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. Sing praises, Alleluia. All who long pain and sorrow bear, praise God and yield up your care. Sing praises, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let all things their Creator bless, and worship God in humbleness. Sing praises, Alleluia. Praise God the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Sing praises, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. On page 60, sorry, on page 61 of our um, Book of Alternative Services, The Service of Light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish.
on page 690, the sung version of the Fas Hilaron. O gracious light, Lord Jesus Christ, in you the Father's glory shone. Immortal, holy, blessed is he, and blessed are you, his only Son. Now sunset comes, yet light shines forth, as lamps are lit to pierce the night. Praise Father, Son, and Spirit God, who dwells in the eternal light. Worthy are you of endless praise, O Son of God, life-giving Lord. Wherefore you all through all the earth and in the highest heaven adored. Back to page 62. We praise and thank you, O God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ you are the creator and preserver of the whole world, but above all you are his God and Father, the giver of the Spirit, and the ruler of all that is seen and unseen. You made the day for works of light and the night for the refreshment of our minds and bodies. O loving Lord and source of all that is good, Accept our evening sacrifice of praise. As you have conducted us through the day and brought us to night's beginning, keep us now in Christ. Grant us a peaceful evening and a night free from sin, and at the end bring us to everlasting life. Through Christ and the Holy Spirit, we offer you all glory, honor, and worship, now and forever. Amen. On page 99, our opening sentences Selection 9 for Ascension Tide. Blessed be the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship Christ among us, our King and our God. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. On page 112, I want to use prayer number 13, the evening prayer, as our prayer for illumination. Sorry, page 132, not 112. 132, prayer number 13. Remain with us, Lord, for the, dark, the day is far spent, and evening is at hand. Kindle our hearts and our way, that we may recognize you in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread a very soon. Grant this for the sake of your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson that was assigned for last Sunday, but I'm using this evening, our Old Testament lesson, is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 36, reading verses 24 to 28. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put in you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, and make you to follow my statutes and be careful to observe all my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I shall be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 143, verses 1 to 10. And you may find that on page 901 of our Book of Alternative Services. O Lord, hear my prayer, and in your faithfulness heed my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. For my enemy has sought my life. He has crushed me to the ground. He has made me live in dark places like those who are long dead. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your great deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul gasps to you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails within me. Oh, do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the grave. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. For I flee to you for refuge. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. And on page one or nine oh two, the Psalm Prayer. God of our hope, when we are discouraged by care or sickness. Help us to recognize your image in ourselves and in others, that we may be made whole and the world become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Our second lesson, as has been in this, uh, the epistles for Sundays uh, following Easter, is from the first letter of St. Peter. Today we are reading in the fourth chapter, verses 12 to 14, and in the fifth chapter, verses 6 to 11, to finish our um, series. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing in Christ's sufferings, so that you may be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Skipping ahead to chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To this God be the power forever and ever. Amen.
This Christian folk song is one of the first songs I heard and learned when I first became a Christian back in 1971. And I've sung it many times, especially when I'm along a uh, lakefront or oceanfront. I hope you enjoy it too. It only takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon all those around can warm up to its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you'll spread his love to everyone. You'll want to pass it on. What a wondrous time is spring, when all the trees are budding, the birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, it's fresh like spring. You'll want to sing, you'll want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountain top. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. I'll shout it from the mountain top. Hey, world! I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you. Many of us can relate to that, many of our sister and brother Christians around the world. Rejoice! Insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. Because the spirit of glory, the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in good time. Resist the devil. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters and all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. As I mentioned during Easter Tide, uh, the lessons assigned for the Sunday readings from the Revised Common Lectionary are mostly from the first letter of St. Peter. And they all seem to revolve around a theme that Peter learned himself the hard way, that theme of suffering. So he learned his lesson, and he passes it on to us. Now, when I went to clergy college one year that the bishop organizes for his clergy every summer at the uh, School of Forestry in Fredericton. One of our speakers quite a number of years ago was Professor Ann Jarvis. And Ann Jarvis was one of Daniel's profs at Wycliffe College and she came to speak to us. And she spoke with great vulnerability and, and personally about her own experience of suffering. Now that drove her to the New Testament to ask, what about God's will and God's promises and suffering? Now, I remember it vividly. In those days, clergy, call, clergy in the diocese were almost all men. And there we were, all these male priests, you know. And here was this woman testifying to us with great vulnerability. And it was a special moment. Now I'm glad to say there's 
there's more women in the diocese now. The odds are being a bit more balanced. Uh, but in those days, maybe in the room of 60 clergy, there might have been two or three women and the, the presenter. And I was impressed by this woman's bravery and openness and what she had to say. And I eventually went out and bought her book just recently, just this year, At the Heart of the Gospel, Suffering in the Earliest Christian Message. And it's actually a look at suffering in Paul's epistles, not Peter's, but really Paul and Peter say the same thing. Uh, Paul, too, suffered a great deal for his um, the people that he loved, for his faith in Christ, and uh, so did Peter, of course, and uh, and reflects on Paul, but it applies especially to our lesson this evening. First, suffering is wrong and should be resisted. You're not to be Christian masochists. Second, we have the resources in Christ to respond creatively and strongly to suffering. Third, we have hope in our suffering. And fourth, we may take up our responsibility in the face of suffering with that hope. So first, suffering is wrong and to be resisted. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you. Resist the devil steadfast in your faith. We think of our forebears across the centuries and even today around the world. And in the face of incredible violence, even barbarism, of overwhelming powers of evil, and war, Christians have stood up for compassion and justice and peace and have brought about many, many things. And we live the errors of this, of 2,000 years of witness and work in the West by the Christian church, even though the church a lot of the time sold itself out to power and to money. Nonetheless, Christians in the trenches in the streets, on the farms, in the offices, especially in the homes, stayed faithful and has ble have blessed, and uh, we have been blessed. We should not be surprised that we, one of the most prosperous and secure generations the world has ever seen during this COVID-19 pandemic, and other experiences we endure, especially our sisters and brothers in Nova Scotia, become aware of how much unjust suffering there is in the world. Suffering is not God's will. But remember the story of Noah, the story in vision. One time God said enough of this and he wiped out the world and washed it clean. But then he, in his heart, he said, I will never do that again. I've got a plan B. It's a plan of patience. It's a plan of courage. It's a plan of suffering. I won't let them suffer alone. I will come and join them personally in Jesus Christ. I'll put my rainbow in the sky. Is a sign of that. And the prophets picked that up, even though the people didn't read that part, didn't believe that part. They said, God's going to come and the Jews will conquer the world and we'll rule the world with the kind of power the emperor does. When the Messiah came, he said, no, the emperor is part of the problem. I am going to be a, a servant king and I'm going to send you my spirit and you're going to be of service too. And I'm setting you up to get hurt. I know it, but my Holy Spirit will give you strength. And one day, just as I will conquer death, you too will conquer death and will join me in the resurrection. And in the meantime, the ascension, he reigns on high, but he reigns in gentleness and patience and love and compassion and mercy. And we should not be surprised that patience and love and compassion and mercy have to show a great deal of courage and strength in the face of the suffering, the evil in the world. So it's part of the plan that we do this, but the suffering is not from God. And God will bring an end to it. But second, we have the resources in Christ to respond to suffering. Rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. Because the spirit of glory, the spirit of God, is resting on you. 
we have resources because the spirit of glory, glory, what's really wealthy, what's really rich, what's really has good character, what's, what will really endure forever, that spirit is resting on us even now. Jesus has sent us his Holy Spirit. And this Sunday coming on Pentecost, we're going to celebrate that. To me, it's a big deal, Pentecost, and the gift of the Spirit. So cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Not shouting from behind a cloud and glory in the distance saying, hang on there, you guys. I love you. Hang on. But coming in human flesh himself, rolling up our sleeves as a carpenter, joining with us in our struggle in life, suffering, dying, rising again, uh, and then sending his personal presence, his spirit, into our hearts and wills and minds and strength so that we may uh, have those resources. And how often people, I think, have a kind of a Sunday school vision of God the Father created the world, you know, and he sent Jesus to show us how to live, and he said things like, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, you know, and, and we think, oh, that's, that's lovely, and then we experience personal tragedy and personal suffering, and we feel that we've been let down by God. But remember the Beatitudes. And we have to also remember the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Jesus is setting up for him fall, unless we receive and we learn to pay attention to and enjoy that presence of God's own Holy Spirit in our lives. And that's what Christian spirituality is about. That's why I want you to read the Bible. That's why I want you to pray. That's why I want you to receive the Holy Communion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I want to get the habit of singing God's praise, to enjoy God, because, you see, we're meant to have those supernatural joy resources equal to the unnatural evils that are all around us, that are against God's will. We have resources in Christ to endure that suffering. And of course, we have the hope that even if we lose a few of our battles in our own particular trench, and that happens, nonetheless, we are contributing to a victory, to a great victory. I think of those soldiers who landed on the beaches in Europe during D-Day and the machine gun fire you know, and the Germans and the barbed wire and the mines, and they had to fight their way through every street and every village. And a lot of the time, you know, uh, they had to retreat or they had to back away. But they knew that the Allies had been preparing this for years. They had been practicing for months and months in the fake trenches and the villages, you know, of Britain. And they knew that the leaders had a plan and they knew that the world was united in overthrowing the powers of, of evil and dictatorship. And they knew the victory was coming. The war was going to be win, whether I win in this trench or not. And Jerry's going to know it. Jerry's going to know it, whether I win this particular battle or not. Jerry's going to know it, that we're winning the war. That's the kind of courage we're to show as Christians. And how many people who supposedly failed? as they sought a cure for a disease, as people are seeking a vaccine against COVID-19 now, or as they administered to people who died anyway, or as they stood up for justice and were thrown in jail. But we remember them now as saints, and their pictures are in our churches and in our stained glass windows. Personally, it felt like they failed in their own personal battles, but the victory was won. And let's never forget Jesus encountering his disciples risen from the grave. And this is part of what the Holy Spirit is for. The Holy Spirit, you see, is a kind of a, well, the, the old King James Bible used the word earnest. More, more modern translations use the word down payment or guarantee. The Spirit is a kind of an earnest or down payment for of our future destiny and anticipation, even now, that we're the winners. That's our hope. That's our hope. And in the Bible, rejoice always has a future reference. We rejoice in our destiny. Whatever what the tragedy is now, we can laugh, we can sing, we can thank God for something, even if it's only that we have somebody to complain to, and we can rejoice. Finally, our responsibility. Resist the devil. You know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. 
we are to do this together. Often, when people in our prosperous societies become ill or sick, we kind of withdraw, you know. I'm not talking about, you know, our immune system is, 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 is gone and we, we have to withdraw. Be careful. I, I, that's, that's understandable. But, you know, we, we kind of withdraw. And everybody says, oh, I don't know what I'd say to them. You know, they, They've lost their, their dearest loved one. I just don't know what to say. My words sound so cheap, you know, and, and, and this kind of thing. And, and we kind of withdraw. And that's really sad. You know, because Galatians 6, verse 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We're not meant to bear these things alone. Our responsibility is to find partners, to join together, and to do something about it. Together. I think of Terry Fox, who suffered from cancer. He was a Christian, a member of the United Church, and he decided he was going to fight cancer. And the people who rallied around him, first his family and his friends, and then people all across the country who were inspired by him. Now remember, they don't show this on TV very often anymore. It's politically incorrect. Remember all this, uh, after the cancer came back and he was on his deathbed in the hospital. And he said, with what time I have left, I want to get to know Jesus more. He ran with me in that marathon. And now he's with me. And I want to get to know Jesus more. That's the most important thing to me. You see, he had that sense. Jesus was with him. And part of that came from the fact that he wasn't alone in his battle with cancer. He brought the whole nation with him. And we continue to fight with him today. So those are the four things that Phyllis, uh, sorry, that um, Anne Jervis highlights. Phyllis is one of my profs at, at uh, GST. And that Anne Jervis from Wycliffe College speaks about in her book, At the Heart of the Gospel, Suffering in the Eurydice Christian Message, that she's learned from Paul. Suffering is wrong and should be resisted. We have resources in Christ to respond to that suffering. We have our hope and we have our responsibility. What a great um, time this has been learning from St. Peter and his hard learned lessons in suffering. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come, let us sing of a wonderful love, tender and true, tender and true, out of the heart of the Father above, streaming to me and to you. Wonderful love, wonderful love, dwells in the heart of the Father above. Jesus the Savior, this gospel to tell, joyfully came, joyfully came, came with the helpless and hopeless to dwell, sharing their sorrow and shame, seeking the lost, seeking the lost, saving, redeeming at measureless cost. Jesus is seeking the wanderers yet. Why do we roam? Why do we roam? Love only waits to forgive and forget. Home, weary wanderers, home. Wonderful love, wonderful love, dwells in the heart of the Father above. Come to my heart, O oh, the wonderful love. Come and abide, come and abide. Lifting my life till it rises above. Envy and falsehood and pride. Seeking to be, seeking to be. Lowly and humble, a learner of thee. page 189 of our Book of Alternative Services, how we affirm the faith of our baptism as we uh, affirm the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers, I'd like to turn to page 691 for what's called the Family Prayers in our Book of Alternative Services, page 691. Let us pray together to the Lord, saying, In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, even though we're spiritually apart, uh, even though we're physically apart, we're spiritually together. For the earth which provides for our needs and is coming to life around us. For the new life you have given us in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to you for our Christian family. Especially for our sisters and brothers in our parish or in your own personal parish. Circles of uh, fellowship. Especially the younger people and for grace to grow in your love. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to you for our world, for all its cares and needs, and for all who lead us and care for us, our government leaders. Those serving in emergency services and first responders, those serving in nursing homes and hospitals, medical people, bless them and keep them. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to you for those in need, for the sick and the lonely, for the hurt and the frightened, and for those who live without hope. Especially we remember personally people in our own circles of love who need special grace equal to their special challenges at this time. Continue to pray for Mary Lou, and for Russell, and for Sean. And you may name people in your own hearts. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those we love who have died, that you will surround them with your care and your love. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for one another, asking you to bless us, our friends, our relatives. Bless the places where we work. Bless our homes and our life together. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us remember before God our selfish ways, the things we have done wrong, the sorrows we have caused, the love we have not shown. Most merciful Father, forgive us our sins against you and against one another. Strengthen us to overcome our weaknesses, that we may live in love as you would have us live. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And now, may the Lord have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be light in our darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, I'm excited to announce that this Sunday morning we will have services for Pentecost Sunday, Holy Communion from the Book of Alternative Services in our two churches. We'll be social distancing, we'll be sanitizing. Uh, we'll be serving communion in a special way to fulfill all the government requirements 
uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, all the social restrictions, and we're quite confident we're under this safely, and we're th thankful for the opportunity that the government and our bishop has given us to be able to gather. And then afterwards, we'll decide whether we'll keep coming together or, or, or what we'll do for the future. So that'll be at the Church of St. Simon and St. Jude at 9.30 Sunday morning, May 31st, and then at the Church of the Ascension in Abhawk at 11 o'clock. Now, some of us may not be able to attend. Some have been watching from other places, and we welcome you. We're thankful for your joining with us in this way. And so what we will do is I will still post uh, a prayer service for midweek, but I'll post it Sunday morning, Saturday night or Sunday morning. So you can still have that service to watch as your Sunday morning service, or if you come to church on Sunday or whatever, then Wednesday evening or whatever during the week, you can have it for an evening prayer service, and I'll be doing that. And by Wednesday evening, we'll have looked at how our Pentecost Sunday experience went and what we're going to do uh, from here. But I'm tempted to keep doing a midweek evening service no matter what we do on Sundays, uh, but I'll let you know more about that later. And I thank uh, the wardens and other volunteers from the vestry, the parish who have been cleaning the church. I think you could perform open heart surgery in our churches right now and getting all ready and reading our three pages of guidelines that we set up uh, to, to um, fulfill the government's expectations and our bishop's directive and are ready. And, and we're going to have this at hand. It's been quite a bit of work and our uh, Pentecost Sunday will be quite a celebration that we have overcome. My former organist at Church Good Supper, David Mitchell, taught this to us as a hymn we often sang at Evensong at the Church of the Good Shepherd in the summer. I hope I can do it justice, not like David, but, you know, I do want to share it with you. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with hope and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new. Faithful when we feel Christ's call. May the God of healing free the earth from fear, freeing us for peace both treasured and pursued. May the God of love keep our commitments clear. To a world restored, to human life renewed, praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful, when we hear Christ's call. Christ is within each and every one of us, the hope of glory to come. Go, therefore, back into your daily lives with a daring and yet a tender love. And whatsoever you do this week, do it in love and in the strength of the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, who goes with us. Amen.